Hello! Today's topic is to repair a Sunnyboy SB2500 inverter. If the failure LED indicates a failure and in the display there is a message shutdown, a very common error source is a defect current sensor. After the intro I will show you how to disassemble the Sunny Boy, change the current sensor and assemble the Sunny Boy again. The today's video will handle the following topics. Safety notice, error indication, disassembly of the inverter, replacing the current sensor, assembling the inverter and a functional test. Work on the mains and devices that are intended for operation on the mains may only be carried out by trained electricians. Danger to life due to high voltage. This video is for information only for electricians to shorten troubleshooting time. Until now I have only repaired the German version of the Sunny Boy SB2500. At the German version the failure LED indicates a fault and the message Störung Shutdown appears. I assume in the English version something like Failure Shutdown appears. Before we start with the disassembly of the inverter, I want to make you aware about a warning of the supplier inside the inverter. Attention! High residual voltage even in case of disconnection of the device. Discharging of capacitors takes longer than 30 minutes. For this reason I disconnect the solar panels and the grid from the inverter and let the inverter rest for 24 hours before I start the disassembly. Remove the cover. First we have to remove the four screws. Then we can remove the cover. And disconnect the ground wire. Here you have to press to release the connector. The issue is this current sensor. We had already several defect inverters and each time this current sensor was defect. Document and photograph the lines. Now the protective ground and the plus and minus lines to the solar panels and also these lines on the output have to be disconnected. To avoid problems with reconnecting the wires at the right place, document all wires in detail and make detailed photos of all the connections. Disconnect the lines. I disconnect now the lines to the solar panel strings. The line for the protective ground. And now I remove the wires at the other side from the main board. And also the two pole and three pole connector here in the red circle must be removed. The three pole connector I had already pulled out before the photo and not inserted completely due to the high pull out force caused by the locking hooks. Each of the connector has on the outer contacts small locking hooks. To release the connectors press on the orange arrow position on the locking hooks. Here you can see the locking hooks of the three pole connector. And here the locking hooks on the two pole connector. Remove the display board. On top of the four distance pins there are locking hooks. To remove the display board we have to press the locking hooks together and press it to the holes. And now pull the display board vertically away to avoid bending of the contact pins. Loosen the circuit board underneath. 
Here again we have to press the locking hooks on the top of the distance pins together and press it through the holes. We can now fold the circuit board away. Unscrew the heatsink. To disassemble the inner heatsink from the big outer heatsink, these three screws must be removed. Unscrew the main board. Now we have to remove these four screws to remove the main board. Now we can move the middle circuit board back on the distance pins, but do not lock it on the distance pins. Remove the main circuit board from the housing. Due to the thermal pace between the inner and outer heatsink, the inner and outer heatsink glue a little bit together. So I recommend to push away the inner heatsink from the outer heatsink with a flat screwdriver before removing the circuit board from the housing. Replacing the current sensor. This current sensor was already on several other inverters defect. I will change it now. For this I rotate the main board to the back side. I will now here desolder the current sensor. The desoldering and suck off the solder with the desolder pump is often easier when new solder and flux is put on the pins before. At the big holes sucking off the solder is relatively easy. At the small holes sucking off the solder is difficult. For that I recommend following trick. First solder a thick copper wire on these pins. When you now make this copper wire hot with your soldering iron, all pins get simultaneously hot and you can remove the current sensor. Here's the old sensor which I have desoldered and the back side and here's the new sensor which I will solder in and also the back side. When we have removed the solder from the holes with the desoldering pump and or with the desoldering braid we can put in the new sensor and solder it in. Assembling the inverter. When the sensor is soldered in and the flux is removed from the printed circuit board, we can put in the main board into the housing. For that I turn over the main board and I put the middle board on the distance pins without snapping in. Now we put the main board into the housing. and fasten the heatsink with the three screws.
Now we put the middle board on the distance pins and snap it in on the locking hooks. And we connect all the wires and connectors as they were before. Now I put the display board on the distance pins and snap it in on the locking hooks. Finally we connect the two grey connectors. Now we fasten the main board with the four screws. Connect the ground wire of the cover and close the cover and fasten it with the four screws. And now the functional test. The inverter delivers, like the other inverters, about 1900 Watt, so the repair work was successful. That's all for today. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe my channel. And to be informed about new videos, activate the bell. See you in the next video. Bye bye!